a roll of green and a roll of red duct tape. And as we took the rigging down, I used the green on one side and the red on the other side so that I could uh, differentiate the port and starboard gear and keep it all together in one package. So now that I've got it back here and it's time to re-rig, it's time to take each one open and measure each one individually to purchase the new wire rigging. So now to measure the full length of the, of the rigging, I stopped by a discount tool shop and bought this big long uh, tape measure, I think it was for under about five dollars. Took a two by four, drilled a hole through it and then got a long nail. And what I do is take the tape measure, put the nail through that and through the eye of the rigging. And now I can just go ahead So I uh, took and made a uh, printout of the side of the boat, labeled each of the lines, and then made a little cue up here for uh, E equals I, F equals fork, and S equals stud, so that when I measure the piece of rigging, I, may, I can put in here the length of that rigging, and then at each end, I can put in what is at the end. When I'm done with this, I can total up all the pieces, uh, you know, X number of uh, studs, X number of forks, X number of eyes, and go ahead and place my order at one time for the length of material that I have and how many of each of the ends and what types they are. As the rigging came down, I was inspecting it, and as it turns out, it was a good thing. This is what we saw. So after I uh, went ahead and did my diagram and put every, all the parts in it that I needed, I went ahead and uh, ordered from uh, John Egger's Sailmakers. And for Guinevere, it's going to take one backstay insulator. And this uh, Hymod one is a fail-safe one, which I really, uh, really like. In that if it if it breaks, it's internally it uh, takes up, so it, it you can't lose the backstay. Uh, got ten eyes. Got eight studs. Four forks and two toggles. So. I'm just about ready. As uh, soon as the, soon as the uh, actual wire gets here, because it hadn't arrived yet, I'll be ready to start uh, putting together the rigging. And I got my 250 foot of stainless steel rigging wire. Now with one end on, I'm able to take the old wire, put it over the a nail that I drove into a sturdy shelf that won't move and put the other end on also of the new wire and I've used just a little crescent wrench to lock the two together and now I can just pull the two tightly to get to the end of the line and make sure that I'm at the proper length. Now that I've got these pulled tight I set this up next to it and I know that I need to cut the wire just about there so I'm going to put this around it and then I'll mark it on the, on the tape of exactly where I want to put it. Now I can mark it with uh, keeping these tight. I can mark this about here and that's where I'm going to cut the wire. If anything 
in this instance I'm going to have it a little bit long not much just a little bit uh, my rigging was very tight to begin with so I know I've got a little extra space might also note that for the reel of wire in order to not lose it and uh, uh, have it come all undone I put this line through it and I can use that line to hold the spool and it holds the wire on the spool so it doesn't all unravel at once and cause havoc. Now what I've done is I've taken a 2x4 put it up on end and I just used a saw to saw a groove in here that the wire lays in and then a cross cut right here that uh, aligns and now I can use my hacksaw to cut that nice slowly and gently and I might add the biggest hint I can give you at this end is to use a new hacksaw blade don't go sparingly don't be trying to save uh, you know a nickel because you want it to cut cleanly sharply and relatively quickly so don't spare the blade and so now that I've stretched them out cut it and temporarily just installed the end uh, not real tight not with the lock tight yet and I pull them both tight you can see that uh, they're coming out pretty darn close to exactly what they were before as I said I'm trying to get them just a tad longer than they were before uh, make it easier to install number one number two uh, if I cut it a little long with these reusable high mud I can always take them off and cut off a little bit of the of the cable and put them back on I don't have to worry about losing them, uh, or losing a few inches and having to put on a whole new wire okay I thought I'd do a quick close-up of putting one of the fittings on uh, after you get done cutting it, you have tape on both sides, hopefully. You take that tape off. Now, one of the things that I do is I take this tape or another piece of tape and I put it around it just like that. Then I take the sleeve from the fitting, fits over it, and that just holds it right there so that it doesn't fall down if you're working with a real long piece. It gets frustrating if this falls like a f two feet, feet away, you know, it's just a, a pain. Then the next thing I do is peel back these. I hold, hold my hand up tight and peel these back. Now, I'm here to tell you this is not an easy job to do to peel these back. This wire is tight and it does not want to unlay. So once you get those peeled back a little bit you take this cone, it's all reusable so that's really good, and you slide that down on the inner part of the wire. Now you want a little bit of that wire showing, that center, about so and then you take the next piece which has a uh, recess in one side and flat on the other you want that recess to fit down to, so that this cone fits into that recess and that goes over the wire center also sometimes you've got to move the little pieces aside and it's not always real easy to do. Uh, I would suggest not trying to do this aboard if you don't absolutely have to. Uh, occasionally, just occasionally, this little centerpiece will jump off. And if it jumps off, 
it goes places and you don't know exactly where it's going to go. So uh, you don't want it to jump off and hit the briny blue. Then you're going to relay these wires back and they're going to be in order that they, that they were taken off. So you're going to lay them back and in my case I'm having two wires per indent on the side of this cone. Uh, and getting the proper wires in the proper place is also kind of hard to do. Uh, they, you can't have them overlapping each other. You have to have the proper one in the proper order, as I said. Sometimes you need uh, maybe a little screwdriver, a little jeweler screwdriver to go in there and pull out the proper wire from the one next to it. They like to wrap around each other and get close. And you've got to separate them and start feeding them into the little recesses. Okay, so I've raised it up just I've raised the bronze piece and the cone up just a just a slight little bit so that you can see each one is where it's supposed to be. Then you take your fitting here and you slide it up and tighten it up like this. And you can see the parts inside there. And then I'm I'm installing this on the backstay insulator. This is the way they come brand new, but all the fittings basically are the same. I will then use Loctite and install this on. Uh, I'm not tightening it right now. I use the Loctite in a few minutes and get it on. And that's all there is to putting one of these together. Now, I don't know about you, but my thumb, I'm using my thumbnail, and for me, the, about the maximum I do per day are four of these fittings, which means two cables. Uh, day before yesterday, I did six. My thumb was sore at the end of the day. So leave yourself enough time to comfortably do two cables a day or four fittings per day, and you should have no trouble at all doing it yourself. Okay, so here we are. One full new set of rigging for a North C27 Guinevere and uh, this is where we're going to end it right now. The next step is to uh, go ahead and step the mast and uh, make sure it's all done properly and all fits. At this point we're going to have a yard step the mast and uh, while I connect up all the rigging and then we'll revert back to raising and lowering it ourselves but at this point with all new rigging, I think it pays to be cautious and let them do it.